Hey, hey, next up. Next up, we got Noah Levin. Uh, you know, doing a little research on, on this topic, I noticed that Noah might have in the past been called Sparky, but he didn't like me to ask him about that. Uh, he does have a cool website from a long time ago, and he has a hot resume, but he told me he was too old. He could be considered a master electrician, which made me call him Sparky, but don't worry about that. So here's what I got. At No11. OMG, I'm about to do my presentation. Crap, crap, crap. The audience doesn't look drunk enough yet, and I really want to impress this girl I just met. Oh, well, here goes nothing. Number PKN13 tonight. Noah. That was a tweet for those who are keeping score at home. Hi. Uh, my name is Noah Levin, and uh, I'm here to talk to you about how we live in the future. And by the way, isn't that awesome? Um, so first, a little bit about me. Uh, I uh, went to Northwestern. I studied engineering for about three months. And then I studied film and art and technology and some other things. And now I work for McDonald's. And I do uh, communications technology for McDonald's. So what that means is like uh, lighting and sound and video for corporate events. And I do um, uh, like uh, Twitter and texting and uh, interactive game design. All the stuff that I'll be happy to explain to you at the bar later. But it's not pertinent now. My topic tonight is how... It's 2010. I mean, holy crap, guys, we're here, right? We've been reading about this for, for years, right? Flying cars and all that. This is, we've been waiting for this. We're in the future. Welcome. Hi. So, um, so this is very exciting because we have all kinds of cool things. We don't have flying cars, but we've got lots of cool things. Did you know, did you know there's a camera inside your phone, inside your pocket right now? In fact, raise, raise your hand if you have a camera phone. Raise your hand. Look around. This is ridiculous. Now, now, if I had asked you that question five years ago, raise your hand if, if, you, if you would have said, yes, five years ago, I have a camera phone. Probably, okay, there, there are some of you. Okay, now how about, how about 10 years ago? 10 years ago, who's the guy who had the camera phone 10 years ago? Gaff taped together. No, no one. Because, because it didn't exist. In, in fact, if I had asked you that 10 years ago, you would have said, not only how is that possible, not only, not only how would it fit or how could I afford it, but why would I even want one? And now, and now you can't buy a phone without one. That's amazing. And what's amazing is not because you have a camera phone. That's fine. But think about what's happening 10 years from now. 10 years from now, who knows what we're going to have? I mean, the only thing we can really be sure of is that 10 years from now, we're all going to have something in our pockets that no one can fathom right now. Not one of us can imagine it, but we will have it. I promise you we will. And so, and so that's amazing because, frankly, frankly, what does it cost to us? What's the burden on us? 199 bucks every couple years? We can shell that out for whatever's going to be implanted in our wrists then. So, so that's fine because we're consumers and we can adapt and we can evolve with it. I wouldn't want to be a telecom or a manufacturing company right now because you've got to put billions of dollars on the line every couple years to stay one step ahead and that's a gamble I really don't want to take. I mean, imagine being, see, let's do a thought experiment right here. Imagine you're the CEO of AT&T. You're sitting in the CEO's chair, right, at the CEO's desk with a blank sheet of paper in front of you with the five-year plan written on top. What the hell do you do? I mean, I mean, right now your cash cow is minutes, right? But minutes aren't gonna, are going away pretty soon because Clear's here, and, and, and frankly, you can do Skype and Google Voice on your data plan, and your data plan's going away too because Clear's got 4G, and 4G's one better than 3G, right? So the, 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 the data plan's going away. And then and they've got this fiber, billions of dollars of fiber running right into your door so they can get you that, so they can get you TV and internet, really, really high-quality stuff, right? Except Clear can get you internet in your home too, and it's easy easier and it's cheaper. So why would you need them for, t for internet? And then once you've got internet, you can watch Hulu on your, on your internet. You don't need them for TV. And here's the kicker. When you watch uh, The Office on Hulu, Hulu is owned by NBC, NBC is owned by Comcast, and AT&T is left out in the cold. I mean, that's, they've got to be crapping themselves right now. And, and <laughs> frankly, it's a very confusing time to be a telecom, but all those competitors around there, those are options for us. Those are options for you and me. We get to have those things, and not for very much money either. That's a great thing. So uh, another th great thing, another thing that's going to help consumers in the near future is open. You've heard the word open before? Open's a big deal. Open, you've heard of uh, open source uh, software, right? That's software written by anyone who wants to contribute for anyone. 
You've heard of uh, open, uh, open Wikipedia is an open source encyclopedia. This event is actually an open source event because as much as I'd love to hear Peter talk for 11 consecutive presentations, it's better when we all contribute and we all, and we all benefit as a result, right? <laughs> now there's a villain in the open game right now. Everyone's open but these guys. Apple's the villain right now and as much as I'm an Apple fanboy and I love them dearly, Apple is closed off. They don't let Flash on. They're, they're, letting, they're making people approve their apps. Uh, they, they're stuck on AT&T. I mean, Apple's starting to look like they did 15 years ago and that's kind of a problem because they almost went bankrupt back then. So I hope they learned their lesson fast, but there's a champion, there's a, there's a hero here too, and that's Google. And Google's got Google Buzz, and Buzz is awesome because it's controversial. But, uh, but the controversy is going to go away real soon, and what we're going to be left with is a game changer, a complete game changer. It's a universal social media inbox. Doesn't that sound awesome? Well, we, we all want one of those, right? Well, here's what that is. Here's why that's so cool. Do you remember back in the old, old days of the online services, right? When there was like AOL and Prodigy and CompuServe. Remember that? <laughs> I had Prodigy, and I could email anyone I wanted as long as they also had Prodigy, which was, was like cool, I guess, but not that cool. And then suddenly there came the internet, and the walls came crashing down, and everything was more open, and open's exciting. So suddenly, the usefulness of Prodigy became huge, because I could email AOL, and AOL could email CompuServe, and suddenly we were all one big happy family. Well, the same thing is about to happen to social media. You're not on Facebook, you're not on Twitter, you're not on MySpace. No one's on MySpace. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's all one big world, right? So, so that's an incredible thing. It's especially cool for the smaller ones. It's especially cool for car space, or, or the garden network, the ones that don't have critical mass on their own, right? Because those together, collectively, in your inbox can have lots of, lots of value. And that's an incredible thing because social media is gaining momentum. If you, if you don't think it's big yet, it will be bigger and bigger every passing year. And that's a great thing because it's so empowering. It's so postmodern, right? I mean, I, now I can go home and I can create content by sharing someone else's content. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, so, and, and what's cool about that, I mean, think it's been going on for years, right? Music sampling, think about like, like uh, Soft Cell. They wrote Tainted Love in the 80s, right? Great song, Defined a Generation. Not mine, thankfully. Um, they, they, so, so, so fantastic song, fantastic song, but then Rihanna hears it and she thinks, you know, I've got a spin on that. I've got my comments. I can share it with a new audience. And suddenly you've got uh, oh, SOS Rescue Me, uh, sort of defined another generation, I guess, but it's a great song. And so content from content, that's what you're doing when you go home and sit on your couch and, and share things on your wall or retweet. That's all you're doing. It's the same thing. Isn't that cool? You get to be Rihanna. And then even better than that, think about the news now. The news is all, is all very postmodern. It's all, there are no more primary sources anymore. I mean, the, the Wikipedia is getting their, their sources from TV news, and TV news is getting their sources from Wikipedia. And, and, and who, how many of you get your news from this guy? I know I do. That's, that's not the news. That's a retweet on TV. But it's better than the news. Isn't that fantastic? So, so, so I'm getting ahead of myself, but here's the point. The point is that we're living in the future. It's here. It's right now. It's all around us, it's coming at us faster and faster every day. And I don't know what's coming in, in a year or, or in a month or in a week, but I, I'm excited that I'm living through it and I'm excited that I get to do it while it's happening. And I want you to feel that excitement too. So that's what I have. There's my Twitter. Thank you very much. <laughs> do, do, tainted love. Do, do. What, what the fuck is wrong with that, Noah? All right, I, I made a lot of notes here. Did you all make a lot of notes? Um, you missed off eWorld. There was Prodigy, but we were on eWorld. Is that, was there something wrong with that? Um, and I was going to announce that Comcast is going to be our official partner next, but uh, I guess them and AT&T, we're going to have to stick with Time Out Chicago. We're glad about that. Um, hey, you, you want to present a Pachacache Chicago? Sharon, last September, I want to say it was like September 3rd or 4th, it was a, a Sunday. Sharon and I were making out on the, the brown line. We were, we were going up to Wrigley Field, and this guy taps me on the shoulder and uh, says, Pachacache guy, Pachacache guy. <laughs> And, and Sharon just loves this when we're making out on the train. She says, oh my God, it's one of those Pachakacha groupies again. And it's bloody Noah. And he says, hey, 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 hey. Oh, am I interrupting something, he says. Because <laughs> he talks a mile a minute, right? And uh, he says, oh, I was at Pachakacha on Tuesday. It was awesome. Can I present? So, so will you let me make out? Uh, you can present in... in in much. So uh, that's how you get here tonight. And uh, so next time you see Sharon and I making out, um, if you could just give us a couple of minutes, but I, you, I, I'll, happily you can present. Was that what, what you wanted me to say, Sharon? 
And what the hell is wrong with MySpace? I'm on MySpace. Um, huge round for, for Noah. Noah is going to abandon Chicago. And he's going to do this, like, MBA thing in, uh, at Michigan, in Ann Arbor, uh, come the fall. But this is a good thing, right? But no, it's probably going to be so passe. It's probably going to be about as e-world and as MySpace is. But I'm, I'm sure you're going to reinvent it. Thank you very much, Noah.